Hello, welcome to Retro Core. Uh, Blackview have been very kind and sent over a couple of items for us to take a look at. Now, I must point out that while this video is not paid for, I did get these items for free. However, my opinions are my opinions and not those of Blackview. So, first of all, we have the Oscar tablet, which apparently has 14 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, but if you take a look a bit closer, it actually says 8 gigabytes plus expanded. Yeah, yeah, okay. And this is the Oscar Pad 10. We have the specs written on the back. I'll put them in a little bit of text over there so you can see what they are. So it's going to be interesting to take a look at that. And I've also sent along this Blackview uh, wireless keyboard. Now, one thing that did stand out here on the back is the scissor switch keyboard buttons. So um, hopefully this will be quite nice to type on. So uh, what we'll do first is we'll open up the tablet and see what we get in the box. All right, so opening that up, uh, first, about, first on top we have what seems to be a glass, yep. We've got a glass screen protector there, that's pretty cool. We've got the actual tablet itself. All right, so as we can see here, it says 8 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of ROM, 10.1-inch uh, uh, FHD IPS display, uh, 6,580 milliamp battery, not too bad, 8 megapixel front camera, and a 13 megapixel rear camera. We'll take a look at those later on. Um, let's uh, just get it out of the packing here. It slides out. I'll take this little screen cover off. All right. And I notice oh, it also has a plastic screen protector built in. So um, maybe you don't need the glass one. Let's just power it up and see how quickly it powers up. Ooh, a nice little vibration there. So of course we've got a glass front and the back is made of aluminium, I presume. It's got a nice brush coat on it. As you can see, we've got the camera module up there. Parts there, we've got our USB-C input, power, volume rocker, microphone, headphone jack. Okay, nice to see that. And we've got two stereo speakers at the bottom there. Doesn't seem to be any SIM slots. So, oh yeah, we've got a SIM slot as well. And let's see what else we get in the box. Oh, we've got the manual, uh, SIM tool, power brick, which is 10 kilowatts and USB-C cable. Let's just check out this SIM tray and uh, see if it is a SIM tray or just extended memory. Yes, it's actually a SIM tray. Okay, so you can put a SIM in here as well as extended memory in the form of a micro SD card. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this in a week or so after using it and um, we'll load it up with a load of items and uh, see how it performs. Hello, welcome back, and as you can see, it is now Monday the 9th of January, and I've actually had some time with this tablet. So what do I think of it? Well, it's not as good as my other tablet, but then again, it's a little bit cheaper than my other tablet. So first, let's just go through the stuff that's built in. So as you can see, it comes with all the Google stuff built in as standard, including YouTube, and of course, the official Play Store. It also came with a radio, which you need to plug in headphones and also with some games built in. So if we just swipe up from the bottom here, you'll see that it does actually have some games built in. And these are actually put into a gaming mode folder. So if we go into this gaming mode folder, you can see different games that are already, already built into this when you get the machine. But, I've got to put my own games on it in the form of emulation. So let's just get out of that and take a look at the emulation stuff that I've put on here. Then after we've taken a look at this, we're going to take a look at some of the videos and photographs I took with the cameras on this device. So first, let's check out Sega Saturn emulation.
So that is the state of emulation and Android gaming on this device. As you can see, it could play a fairly reasonable amount of emulation, but still GameCube is out of reach. Sega Saturn seems to have some sound issues. I think that's because this tablet prefers not to use OpenGL as the backend for emulation. It uses Vulkan instead. So I did play around with some of the emulators to see if it make any difference, but um, I was basically running all the emulators on the most optimized settings there. Okay, so what about YouTube? Well, will it be able to play 4K videos? Now, obviously, this is not a 4K display, but does it have the grunt to actually play 4K videos? So what we're going to do is take a look at one of my videos, which is in 4K, once we get rid of these annoying advertisements. Now, go away, go on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just put this into 4K. Uh, no, that's not it, is it? Where are we going? Here we go. So it's on 1080p at the moment. It's, oh, I don't even get the option of 4K video. So there you go. This cannot play 4K, but it is playing this 1080p at 60 frames per second. Or at least it should be 60 frames per second because that's what it was recorded in. Hmm. All right, so how about the camera? Well, the camera is slightly disappointing. As you can see, it does have autofocus there, but it's not exactly the best. So we do have a times two zoom, but it is a digital zoom. And as you can see, my uh, glass uh, stand there needs a bit of dusting. However, the quality of the pictures, as you can see here on the screen, is not very good. It, it kind of blows out the whites. Um, it does have some issues. So let's take a look at some sample videos uh, recorded with this and some sample photographs as well and see what you think. So here we are recording some video with the front facing camera, which unfortunately only does 720p at 30 frames per second. And as you can see in the background, the sky is yeah, you can't really see it, can you? It's a bit white. It kind of blows out the colors. Um, and as for the sound quality, who knows, because I haven't actually heard this yet. But uh, let's take a look at the back camera. We're taking a look at the back camera. So at the moment, we're looking at the inside of a room where it's nice and bright. And yeah, it's uh, not too bad. Now, the back camera does film at 
1080p but still only 30 frames per second. Now did you notice the way it doesn't really like the change in brightness there? Watch the color change. See that? It kind of uh, doesn't like... Here you go, it's changed again. doesn't like the uh, difference in brightness. Now it is uh, a little bit dark at the moment. It's a little bit uh, dusk-like setting. And as you can see, the camera is having a bit of trouble focusing on uh, certain different tone balances. Look at that. See? Hmm, it doesn't like it, does it? So yeah, the cameras are not the best, that is for sure. So what about the keyboard that Blackview also sent over? Well, I actually have been using this and it's not bad actually, it's quite good. I mean, these uh, little scissor keys on here are very responsive and work quite well. Now to set it up is very simple. You can see the C button has connect written on it there in blue. So obviously using the function key and the C button will uh, set up the pairing mode. So first you switch it on, actually I should switch on Bluetooth on the, on the tablet. Okay, and we switch it on and function and C and this should now send out a little message. There we go, Blackview K1 keyboard. Oops, it's finding all sorts of stuff. No, 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 no. Don't pair with my son's Oppo. <laughs> no, not my son's Oppo, my wife's Oppo, I should say. No, 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 no. Come pair with the keyboard. Yes, please. And now we have full access to the keyboard. Oops. Well, we've got a bit of a typo there. That's my fault. But uh, as you can see, you can tape, type tape. You can type pretty fast on this and it keeps up and if it just feels nice. Although my typing skills <laughs> are not the best in the world. Okay, so there you go. Now one cool thing about this tablet is because it's running Blackview's OS over Android, you do actually get a few other extra features, such as this PC mode. Switching it on basically turns your PC, uh, turns your tablet into, well, more like a desktop to be honest. So we'll take a look at this. We've got all the options down the bottom here. We've got a button here, which is kind of like your Windows button. And your tap your your actual programs they pop up in you know little um windows like this <laughs> very much like a pc which is pretty cool to be honest and we can open up lots of different windows and do many different multitasks and so on so hang on let's just move that one over there and there uh, let's open up settings as well there we go so we've got three different things running at once and what's better if we connect the keyboard up to it we should be able to use the mouse and connect this as normal. Here we go, so we've got the mouse on now. And uh, let's just uh, click on a couple of things here. We can drag it over. We can uh, move things around. And of course we can minimize them as we wish, just like you can on a PC. No problem whatsoever. So that is a pretty nice little feature. And of course we can full screen apps as well. So I do like that, it kind of turns your Android tablet into a PC desktop. Of course, running Android apps. And let's just see how many we can get going. So we'll uh, have a bit of Android emulation going there. And uh, let's see what else shall we do. Let's, um, let's open up a bit of a PlayStation emulation. Get Harmful Park running. 
What we'll do is we'll uh, just shrink that down a little bit. Move this over here. Shrink it down a bit. Put it up here. Get the uh, Dreamcast emulator back on. Then we'll have light mode, please. Let's just start up Zero Gunners. And, yep. There you go, we've got two different emulators running there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So thank you to Blackview for sending over the Oscar Pad 10 and the Blackview keyboard. The keyboard is my favorite because as I said, it is very, very light. It's very easy to pack away. It doesn't, it, it weighs nothing. And it works really well thanks to those scissor keys. It's very nice. The tablet itself, um, it's okay. Um, I guess if um, you just after something a little bit on the cheap side, but for those who want something with a bit of power, a bit of grunt, maybe it's not suited to you. And the cameras, yeah, they could be better. But anyway, if you're interested in either of these products, check out the link in the video description, and I'll see you next time, guys. Take it easy. See ya.